this has been pretty much the game that I have been, I want to say, obsessed with this week. Not because I'm playing it, but just the drama, just everything surrounding this game. It has been, uh, it kind of reminds me of back when we were having the Johnny Depp trials. It's like that, (laughs) but in video game form. I just okay. love this. So uh, I I did not follow this all week. I was doing nothing except uh, working, playing uh, Pokemon TCG. Um, and I think I also, towards the end of the week, started playing Deep Rock Survivor. So I've been under a rock. Uh, I knew the game came out. That's about all I knew. I looked mm-hmm. into this controversy before the podcast. Okay, so yeah. I kind of took a, a short crash course. And um, I really don't understand it. Uh, at all. Uh, and I also now, based on your review of the whole situation, I'm curious, um, where'd well, the poop come it, from? You know, where's the poop, it, Grandpa? It's, it's kind of like, you know, and we'll get into it in some comments here, but it's a big, this has been years in the making. Like, it's been a decade in the making. It's been like 10 years since we got the last Dragon Age game. Right. And in that time, you know, Bioware, the developer, has put out Let's just be honest, a couple stinkers. Okay. You know? Lay them on me. And uh, so we had... Lay of your course stinkers ha- upon me. Now, I know that you are... You have some skin in the game in terms of... You like Bioware. You like Mass Effect. I do. Um, now, did you play Mass Effect Andromeda? I'm going to guess uh, probably no, not, right? I've been told that that was a good decision. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so that's one of the things. And of course you know about uh, this this little game called Anthem, right? Um, you know, I seem to recall that it came and went. <laughs> right. So, uh, Bioware has just not Which had the best track the record Depp, uh, the Johnny Depp over Depp. the best. <laughs> True. <laughs> They've not had the best track record um, over the past decade. And Dragon Age the Veil Guard has been kind of hyped up mm-hmm. for kind of like years now as being bioware's return like this is going to be their big moment this is the game where they come back and they're going to deliver this epic rpg they were hyping it up to sort of be like almost like Baldur's gate three level like Mm. huge like it's going to be this big giant rpg where they come back and make a name for themselves and this is the game that's going to do it for them well, and, I can tell you, if you're building up BG three BG three level hype for your game, you are setting yourself up for failure. Yeah, but <laughs> there are a lot of parallels to this game in BG three. So that's the overarching like narrative that brought us to this moment of like okay. Dragon Age: The Veil Guard being like such a an important game for Bioware people who are we're not only fans of past Dragon Age games but also people who just wanted Bioware to come back because they were huge fans of Mass Effect. Of course, after Dragon Age of Veilguard, apparently a new Mass Effect is also coming. So Veilguard is kind of like, it, it's kind of like heralding the return of Bioware. And now that that's where it gets interesting. Because now, now they've here, returned and some people <laughs> don't like what they see. <laughs> exactly. Um, they're here and uh, it's crazy how mixed the results have been. And I don't know what it is, but I love video games that come out and they're just like totally divisive. Mm-hmm. And that is what we've seen with the Veil Guard. And there okay. are a lot of things. And we'll get into the specifics as we go. Yeah. Okay. Well, that explains why I had a little bit of a tough time really nailing down what the controversy was over because there are definitely uh, people on both sides. So, yeah. yes. It is definitely not a one sided affair. Okay. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Well, well, Randy, we have a poll here. Um, are you ready to move on to the poll? Or is there um, more yeah. prologue to the story? No, I think we're. I think this is perfect time for the poll. Okay, well, we asked the Gaming Geek Faithful, we said, are you playing Dragon Age The Veil Guard? And at 8%, people said yes. At 15%, uh, people said no, but I plan on it eventually. 14% said no, and I'm not sure that I will. And a whopping 63% said, hell no, I am not interested in Dragon Age The Veil Guard. Yeah, and we've got a live comment here on Twitch asking if either of us have played it. No, neither of us have played it. Um, And uh, I'll kind of go into it. So, like, one, I actually did get sort of hyped about Veilguard. This was back during the sort of run-up to it when they were promoting it. Um, There was a great article back in now the the magazine. 
amazing that is now gone. Game Informer. Um, there was a great article about uh, Dragon Age: The Veilguard. It actually got me really excited about it. it seemed like the previews that uh, a lot of influencers got to play was very positive. Um, the combat system was, you know, praised as being very fun. Um, and then I was like, well, I'll just, you know, wait until the game comes out and reviews come out. And um, a lot of the people who I really respect their opinion on video games, mm -hmm. um, the reviews were quite negative. But at the same time, there were a lot of positive reviews. So it's yeah. really, really weird. Yeah, uh, that's that's what I saw, you know, during mm -hmm. my brief research. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I also, well, maybe unlike you, I, I really haven't been hopped, you know, hopping up this game at all. Uh, I did play... Dragon Age, I think we decided it was Inquisition back in the yeah, day. Yeah, I think me and you both uh, dabbled in Inquisition and decided that that game just wasn't for us. Yeah, I played quite a bit of it, and I remember I ran into a really big difficulty spike. I couldn't get past it. I got frustrated, so I stopped. Um, mm -hmm. But I did play the, the entirety of the Mass Effect trilogy and loved it. So if this was mm -hmm. a new Mass Effect game, you know, I remember you know how Andromeda was received, uh, so I skipped that one, but... I would I would be way more excited and way more interested in a Mass Effect um, than I am, you know, this game. But it is interesting that it seems to be so divisive. I'm still not sure, really, that I understand why, though. If I'm being honest. Well, there's a lot of things. I mean, like we ha we have a uh, well. One before we move on to the comments, I do want to point out that we have here um, a pretty big portion of people saying they're not interested in this game. Yeah. You add together the two bottom nos. Um, you're talking almost 80% of people, mm -hmm. you know, say that they're probably not going to play this game. Right. That is not a good a number for a, a game from a developer that is as prestigious as Bioware from an IP like Dragon Age, which, okay, Dragon Age isn't the biggest IP in the entire world, but it ain't no dinky IP. This is a pretty well-known IP. I would say that, you know, like, not we compare it? You compare it to something like Baldur's Gate, I would say that before Baldur's Gate 3, Dragon Age has mm -hmm. a bigger presence than something like Baldur's Gate 3. Bef Baldur's Gate before Baldur's Gate 3. That's what I'm saying. Yes. Now that we had what Baldur's Gate 3, those things have changed. <laughs> right. You're saying as an IP, Dragon Age would have seemed bigger pre-Baldur's Gate 3. And I completely agree with that. Yes. And they're, and they're trying to sell it as something like a Baldur's Gate 3, like experience. Mm -hmm. Um but if you go, I went on Steam this morning just to see like what the Steam numbers were, and there are more people playing Baldur's Gate three right now than there are playing Dragon Age: The Veil Guard, even though this game just came out. That's um, that's both crazy and and also a testament to BG three. Yeah, that's crazy <laughs> on two fronts. But um, you got any guesses of what the all time peak numbers were for Dragon Age: The Veil Guard on Steam? Oh, not really. Um, I don't know. Uh, 50,000. Close, close. It was, it was like 80 something thousand. Okay. So that's, okay. you're really close. Um, so like, I think that you could look at that number and you could say, <coughs> that's pretty good. You know, like, I don't think that number is terrible. Right. Um, but I think for something as big as Dragon Age, you look at something like, I mean, I hate to compare it to Baldur's Gate 3, but Baldur's Gate 3 had an, you know, an all-time Steam um, peak of like 800,000. Like it was 10 times right. what Dragon Age uh, the Veilguard is. Right. So it, these, these aren't stellar numbers, even though they're bragging about it being a big launch for them. I'm sure it is a big launch on Steam for them, but... Um, I don't think it's enough. And it seems like these numbers have dropped off really quickly. Um, you know, like we have this comment here, this first comment from BB Thumb, who says, Dragon Age is a sad, sad fall from grace. And, you know, I think one of the big problems people have with this game is that it all comes down to what you want out of a video game, which, I mean, obviously... But the thing about this particular Dragon Age game is that it is almost, almost entirely divorced from what Dragon Age games have been in the past. 
Um, you know about this game's art style being completely different, I'm sure, right? Yeah, it looks like uh, it's almost like Pixarified. Like it's it's way cutesier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, well, it you know that particular change isn't just in the way that the character models look. Um, they basically also kind of made the entire theming much more set for younger, almost like children audiences. Like everything's super light. Mm-hmm. There's none of the darkness and, you know, like you really can't make any decisions and just be like a bad person. Like you can, like you can make some horrible decisions in Baldur's Gate three, you know? Oh yeah. Um, and in, and in past dragon age games and in like mass effect, from what I understand those games, you really have decisions that you get to make that have implications Definitely. and, and they can be negative. And mm-hmm. it doesn't Absolutely. seem like that is the way it is here. It seems like it's just mostly positive stuff that you can do. Yeah. In Mass Effect, uh, you can do everything from uh, lay with your uh, shipmates in the biblical sense all the way to <laughs> yeah. like literally c- committing like accidental genocide uh, like against a whole planet. Like it's a crazy, that game is crazy. Yeah. The I think that's what people loved about Bioware. And it seems like the Veil Guard is. Just sort of like, it's almost like it's, um, I guess, watered down in a way, Mm -hmm. from what I can tell. It just doesn't offer anything that's like real decisions. Like you have decisions, but they're like decisions that don't matter. You know, like there are plenty of games, like one that comes to my mind where you make decisions, but they don't really matter. Like they might superficially matter, but they don't really. It's something like um, Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon Forbidden West, like. In throughout the game, you might make decisions and you might they might change something about the game, but they really don't. It's like an illusion of a choice. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Uh Fallout 76 or not 76, Fallout 4 taught me well about the illusion of choice. Yeah, um, great example. You know, it's a great it's a great game if you want to say yes or no in about three different ways. Yeah, and like Actually, no matter what that's not true. You can say no. Well, yeah, that's about true. You just eventually have to pick a way of saying yes if you want to progress. Yeah. <laughs> and you can say it like in, in three different flavors, but you know, you're still they, they bring you to the same place no matter what. Definitely. Yeah. And uh so I think that's a big part of the hate against Veilgar, but it's so weird because a lot of reviews for Veilgar were quite positive. Um a lot of people really like this game and still do like this game, mm-hmm. but it does seem like the critics were much more positive about it than the players are. I think mm-hmm. the critic reviews ended up being like mid eighties, which is really a good score. Like yeah. A mid eighties is a, is a, is a very good critic score. Mm-hmm. The, the player score is more like mid seventies, which is still okay. Not bad. Right. Okay. But there well, seems to be a lot of divisiveness. Well, we do have a comment here. That's maybe backpedaling, not backpedaling, but pulling back on a little bit of the hate here mm-hmm. uh, from Celeria Rose, who said the hate against it is massively overblown. I'm not saying it looks like a game of the year or some astounding hit, but from what they have shown, it looks like it could be an enjoyable enough time. And that's and kind of what I would assume based on the, you know, maybe hour now that I've lived with the idea of the game being controversial. Seems yeah. Like and I think that people it, say good and bad, be. so it must be middle of the road. Yeah. It's, it's just like, I think it all depends on. Oh, that's not good. We lost Randy. I think Randy's internet just cut out, guys. He'll be back here in a second. Hey, sorry about that. Randy, what happened? I lost internet. My my internet just cut out and it was gone. That's that's weird that you lost it and I didn't. I know, so strange, but it's back now. I do apologize about that. Did you keep things going while I was gone? Uh, I did, but I also wasn't sure you were going to get internet back, so I did make some comments about how and Randy's probably going to edit this part out. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, would, well, I considered back. going on to the next comment and just like show must go on, but show must go on. I yeah. thought you might not be able to get your internet back. So I did eventually, yeah. I, I just started talking to Plague Doctor. I would have loved to have seen you just continue on, but uh, that would have been, that would have been great. <laughs> um, that would have been, all right. uh, that would have been super weird if one of us just cuts <laughs> out and they never come back. And the other one, <laughs> what if I just didn't acknowledge it at all? What if I just kept going, went to the next comment, just kept going, never acknowledged you were gone? Now, that would be, that'd be a moment. (laughs) 
Um, well, I guess we can move on to the next comment here. Yeah, Soliria Rose, sorry that your comment, uh, maybe you didn't get the full gaming gig treatment, but uh, you know what? You got a moment. You got like a genuine podcast You did. Podcast you got moment. a moment. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hit us with the next comment here, Gampa, from uh, Mari Moat. Mari Moat, yeah. Who says, uh, the only thing that doesn't make me want to play is the new art style they chose for the game. And this is probably the thing that the entire time that this game has been promoted and now that it's out, people just hate the way the character models look. Yeah. And I I, I don't hate them. I think they look kind of cool. But apparently it's a quite a departure from what they've done in the past. And I think people yeah, don't it love is. that. Yeah, it's very much a departure. And it's so weird. It's like it had people asking. They were like, are you guys going to do this to Mass Effect? Are you going to Pixarify right. Mass Effect? Um, and they had to respond. They'd be like, no, don't worry. Mass Effect won't have an art style like this that will it will continue like a realistic you know a photorealistic look about it mm -hmm. um so but this is definitely a thing i mean there are other things too um things that you know like, there are always controversies that pop up there are controversies that i'm not interested in, in talking about i like the game side of stuff i'm right. not interested in the political side of things so like no. those things i don't care about uh, i'm not interested in it i think those kind of things come and go you know they just are what they are right yeah i read i read a little bit about that as well but i uh i also don't really feel qualified to throw that into the podcast so well, let's talk about the I'm, game I'm sure that's been part of it but it really hasn't been a big part of what um has been the the overarching divisiveness you know like those there are things like that that pop up in lots of games mm -hmm. and there you are. know th it's it's the people who are really, really like uh, either like turned off or like, you know, by stuff like that. It's a pretty small section of people. Um, oh, yeah. Generally, there are other problems or other things that people like about it. It seems like that for this game in particular, um, the whole time I've been looking into it, I just think like it just sounds like if you want to play this game, why wouldn't you just play Baldur's Gate 3? Besides the mm. combat being different, that's the, really the big differences between them. Yeah, I do kind of agree. I, you know, watching the trailers for this game, it mm -hmm. just kind of made me think like, you know, I never finished BG3. I mean, Baldur's Gate 3 is turn-based combat, which is not... my. Honestly, I'd probably like the combat in Veilguard more. Mm -hmm. um, it looks fun. Apparently, it is very fun until you realize that like, you know, you have to spend like 50, 60 hours with it. And by like hour 10 or 20, you're already tired of it. Um, it just doesn't have a whole lot of depth and gets very repetitive. Mm -hmm. So that's the only problem is like, but it looks fun. It's, you know, very action oriented. And I like games that have that. It's kind of like the same problem we had with final fantasy 16 with people, you know, wanting something right. different from that, but right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Were you ready to move on, Randy? Yeah. Before we do move on, uh, I just want to say I'm interested to see what happens with Veilguard. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm just interested. We'll keep you guys updated if anything crazy happens in the future. 